someone asked me to solve this integral for them to help them with a problem they have in physics. So let's do it. Now, the easiest way is to use the gamma function, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to define it if you've never heard it before, but solving this integral, you can't really do it using U substitution or integration by parts isn't directly uh, usable, but uh, we're going to use the gamma function. And the gamma function, what it is, is this. It's this capital letter, gamma, looks like a half t, is equal to this integral right here. And this is a very famous function. It's used in physics and engineering. It generalizes the factorial for imaginary and, and real numbers. Uh, but anyways, we're going to make our integral look like the gamma function. So if we compare the two of them, we'll see that the z minus 1 equals this 3 halves right here. Uh, so z equals 5 over 2. And then if we look at the other exponent, this ax right here equals t for the gamma function. So ax equals t. And if we divide by a, x equals t over a. Now, our integral has a dx here, and the gamma function has a dt. So if we take this x equals t over a, take the derivative, rearrange. This is like first year calc stuff. dx equals dt over a. And at this point, my friends, yo, we can substitute this stuff into our integral to get this. So rather than x, we have t over a because x is t over a. And rather than e to the negative ax, we have e to the negative t because ax equals t. And rather than dx, we have dt over a because dx is dt over a. Yo, and we're almost there. We're going to pull out the a's because the a's are constant. And we yank them out of the integral. So the a to the 3 half comes out, the a comes out. And we're left with this integral right here. And at this point, yo, this is exactly like the gamma function where z equals 5 over 2. That's what we defined it as, z equals 5 over 2. And this has a well-known value of 3 quarters root pi. Now, this is a whole other proof in itself to get this value. But we're using the gamma function as a tool to solve our integral. So we're going to take that well-known value and use it. So if we put all that together, we have 1 over a to the 5 halves. It's 5 halves because we have 3 halves here, and then there's a to the 1. When you multiply the bases, you, you add the exponents. And then this is the value of the gamma function, and we're done. Bob, <laughs> there we are. Now, I should mention, this isn't always true. This is only true for certain values of a. a has to be greater than 0. If we look at the graph of this function, x to the 3 halves, e to the negative ax, where I just set a equal to 1, you see that the curve goes up and then it goes down and it's actually asymptotic with the x-axis. So there's a defined area under the curve as x goes to infinity. The integral is convergent and as a increases, the curve just goes closer and closer to the x-axis and we still have a convergent integral, a defined area under the curve. But if a equals zero, then the curve goes off. So if a is zero, this is all one. So we have the integral of x to the 3 halves. And the improper integral is divergent because as x goes to infinity, the curve goes to infinity. So there's no defined area under the curve. And if a is negative, it just gets worse. It's just, it's still divergent. So we need a to be greater than zero. All right, hope you enjoyed it. There's many, many other integrals I've got. Check them out. Hang in there. Integrals are not easy, but you can survive. Cheers.